It's our story. Jim Tusher, St. Louis, Missouri. Well, when I was in therapy in, in, uh, in Rochester, New York, my uh, therapist, Jack Goodbody, said that uh, a lot of guys that end up with spinal cord injuries like myself, when they go out in public, would, would find it uh, more comfortable if they wore sunglasses because it, it gave them a little bit of um, uh, isolation or separation from the stairs and um, um, being treated like an oddity or freak, perhaps. And um, uh, I never, I never went to the sunglasses. I, um, I think I, I developed um, uh, somewhat of a hostile attitude in the early days. Um, I remember one night I was at uh, when I was at Rusk. I'd first got, gotten my first long leg braces, and. Um, I'd gotten tired of going up and down the parallel bars uh, in my long leg braces, and I told the therapist that I wanted to uh, take them back up to my room for the weekend <laughs> because I wanted to practice. And uh, she was quite thrilled that I was such a good patient and so dedicated to my therapy. And um, as soon as I got up to the room, I um, threw my braces on, um, then I stretched my... Uh, trousers on over the top of them that looked like those old pant structures from the 50s before wash and wear trousers. And only my, my trousers were, were, st were stretched sideways and that stretched up over the pelvic uh, locks and so on. And uh, headed up to a bar called the Blue Emerald. That, that was the whole purpose of taking <laughs> the, uh, the um, braces, braces uh, to my room for the weekend. And I got up there and um, bellied up to the bar for the first time in, I guess, over a year at that point. And um, uh, I was feeling pretty normal, <laughs> uh, standing at a bar rather than sitting at a table in a back room someplace. And uh, <clears throat> no sooner had I gotten positioned at the bar than this drunk next to me you know, looked down at my boots and saw those funny football-looking boots with metal straps coming out of them and uh, my trousers that were stretched and my big uh, hips all stretched out, and he finally got up to my eyes, and he said, what the hell happened to you? And uh, it just enraged me. And um, so I turned away from him, trying to figure out what to say, and I turned back toward him and gave him a nice spritzly sneeze in his face and, uh, and told him that I had uh, third-stage syphilis and it was going into my nervous system. And um, you could just see the guy counting the spritzels on his face, thinking, which one's going to infect me? But I didn't have to talk to him anymore either. So, but I think that was sort of the high water mark of my hostile period, and um, and I I came to um, uh, eventually try to if I saw someone who was a little bit uncomfortable with me, try to uh, make them a little bit more comfortable so that the next time they engaged engaged with a person with a disability, they wouldn't um, feel uncomfortable or push back so that they. Um, might feel uncomfortable at the next one. I remember when I was in graduate school in Columbia, Missouri, uh, one of the few nights I went out to, uh, um, uh, had, a, had a steak dinner, and uh, as the evening was coming to, to the end, a, a woman from another table, a very elderly, very refined lady, came over to the table and patted me on the shoulder and said, it's really nice to see you out this evening. And I turned around and looked at her and I said, it's very nice to see you out this evening too. And she got this quizzical look on her face like, what could he possibly mean by that? <laughs> I think she thought I was out from the home for the, for the evening. <laughs> so in the 60s, there, were, there was a lot of those um, negative attitudes out there. I seemed to um, have those interactions very seldom these days. It's very seldom that someone uh, treats me like a second-class citizen, uh, at least interpersonally. So I think uh, somehow the movement has trained um, uh, the American public uh, that it's just not PC to talk down to people with disabilities or uh, like we can't hear or they're not quite as smart as, um, as we might be if, our, if only our legs worked. I think that's gotten better over the years. 
I may be deluding myself, but I think they have. The It's Our Story Project is a national effort to make disability history public and accessible. Visit us at www.itsourstory.org or on the It's Our Story Project YouTube channel.